Hey Federico, nice to see you here and thank you so much for joining the first of these series where I'm interviewing musicians and creators that I yeah that I think are amazing. So thank you for joining joining on this call. It's so cool. I'm very happy you're the first. Thank you, my pleasure. Fantastic. So yeah, maybe to give you all uh, at home a bit of background, uh, I've been watching Federico's channel since many years and we met at Superbooth uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And going to Superbooth, I had this epiphany that I actually thought it would be really interesting for all of us in the music production field to not nerd out so much on the gear, but actually to find out about the minds behind the music and, and just people with a lot of experience to share some of their ideas, learnings, philosophy about making music. I have a few kind of questions that I would love sure. to ask everyone on this series. So if you don't mind, we can maybe jump into that. Um, so what is the one thing you wish you had learned earlier about making music or content creation, whatever you prefer? Uh, it, it's very hard because it's, it's always changed the things like, uh, um, again, at, I'm at 45 and there's a lot of things that I wish I knew, uh, like in music, a lot of times I wish I knew how to read music. I wish I learned, I spent time. I, I feel that uh, what limi limits me a lot in the music creation sometimes is like the um, theory knowledge, like mm -hmm. have more uh, knowledge in harmonic progression, mm -hmm. in, in also reading music, in, in have a lot of cultural uh, knowledge about music. Um, I think I, I know enough to create and, uh, and I grew up during the grunge seen a time when basically we were told whatever you want to say you can say it no matter your technical skill which i appreciate it was great but at this point like i feel sometimes limited in uh, my knowledge of music my actual theory so i wish i spent when i was a kid when you learned better reading mm -hmm. that we should spend more time with that. That's super valuable advice. I think really uh, learning music theory and the way music works in almost like a mathematical way yeah. is, is great if you have that as a foundation that you can also deviate from. But so yeah, if, if, uh, if you're taking piano lessons and you're thinking to throw in the, the towel, it's, it's worth it because yeah, it, it, it really helps. I agree with you fully, I have the same. I wish I'd spent more time uh, also on, on learning music theory. Uh, what are the three things you would recommend to any music producer asking you for advice? So, first things, having a mentor mm -hmm. or somebody that actually teaches you, it's, it's extremely valuable. We now are blessed with YouTube, Patreon, whatever. We can learn a lot uh, just by ourselves, which is great. But for a lot of people, the you need some teacher, some mentor that follows you, even for like keeping you accountable for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the, the trick of paying to the gym so you're going because you paid. At the same way, if you have a master, if you have a mentor that can follow your journey, no matter your age, I have right now my Andrea, uh, it really pushed my knowledge, my creativity uh, a lot. The for, for la last year, I grew up in composing in sound design more than the past five years, just because I met the right person. Wow. And this is one thing that the, the second things that follow, I would say uh, the community and, and the place you live, you live uh, plays a huge role. It's like you need to be in the right place, I think, to grow uh, as an artist or whatever you want to do. Uh, back in my hometown, I come from a very small town, uh, there was nothing, nobody would play electronic music. So what it would have been impossible, especially in the 90s, to, you know, even learn, or even start thinking how to create stuff. So. Then I was in New York where community was way better and now I'm in Berlin which I think it's probably one of the best uh, place if you want to really uh, be surrounded by musicians because everybody seems to be here, especially in electronic music I'm talking mm -hmm. about. So that's the second thing is like uh, try to find the right community. You can do online of course because uh, but face to face it's it's really where things happen. Go visit studio, ask 
uh, creatives because most of them they will always be ready to share mm. it's really rare that I find uh, an artist or a creator uh, that I ask a question or uh, politely of course not just bluntly hey tell me how to do that but most of the people that reach to a certain point are willing to teach uh, that's a fun as a universal Mm -hmm. truth like they get to a point and 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 once they get there i think the duty of an artist the duty of uh, it's to somehow find a way to share i wrote this three you need to be very gentle with yourself uh, it's especially if you work in a creative field it's a brutal it's a brutal field right now and uh, and it can be really hard to navigate this because if you're like me that you're very self-conscious very self-criticizing it can be a, a path of self-destruction and like it can lead to this depression can lead to the worst thing yes yes that's um, true yeah and 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 i feel that the, the the when i start learning not to compare myself to other but start you know to appreciate other for what they do and then start to learn what are your strengths uh, uh, and take them as like the biggest gift like maybe you are great in doing something and you think it's basic and you think it's just like oh everybody can do that and that is where you might be wrong it's like okay i'm great for example everybody told me like i'm great in counterpoint con counterpoint uh, creation and i didn't even know what it was few years ago the counterpoint so it's something that came natural to me i can harmonize four voices very easily and to me it's like oh well everybody can do that that's super stupidly simple uh, the reality is that maybe it's a skill you have an innate things that you have or through your uh, listening through your uh, past it came natural to you so if you focus on that if you focus in going where things seem easy to you, comfortable, maybe it's where then things will come uh, naturally and organically. So the more chill you are with your journey, the more you're taking it easy and, and learn on from yourself, from your pace, it, it, the best it is. That's great me. advice. That's, that's really valuable. What is something that you would recommend uh, to stay away from or ignore? As a, as a creative, as a musician? As a very hypocritically, I would say fame. I would say the... Uh, I, I, I know that I did what I did creating a platform for myself because uh, I mentioned before, like back in the day when I was a teenager, I wouldn't call I was bullied because I was too big to be bullied. Like, <laughs> That's true, you're very big. I was surprised when I met you, you're huge. <laughs> but I was always excluded from the cool, uh -huh. cool kids circle. And that, that was my upbringing. Like uh, I was the big guy uh, looking a little different. So I always felt excluded and that made me think, okay, now I have to build my own platform. And I managed through, you know, the, the, the social, at the same time, this need for validation that comes from the others uh, has been a late motive of my life. I always need uh, some, some, someone else to say, oh, you're good, this is good, this is valuable. And my, my, my journey right now is trying to avoid that. So mm -hmm. if you approach music right now or anything else, it's complex because you will be faced by the, co the, co the, the, the comparison with everything you see in Instagram. And now I can assure you, I talk with all the Instagram synth YouTuber and everybody's struggling, everybody. Mm. We all have this burnout syndrome. We only have this uh, need to be validated by others. And it, it gets to you at a certain point. So uh, if you manage to stay away from that, if you manage to just publish your thing, but then take distance from that. So you, you have to, of course, be out there, but involve yourself just what it's needed and don't over involve yourself because that can literally uh, kill your mood kill your uh, 
uh, intention because then you will start creating for others. So fame, I call it fame, whatever, recognition, uh, that's mm -hmm. the term. That's recognition good. will come and it will always come if you do stuff with uh, passion, with honesty, then of course you might not become as famous or as recognized as Beyonce, fine, but it will come. It, it's like uh, everybody that I know that do its own thing uh, and it do it uh, with passion, it will reach to some good point. Uh, mm -hmm. So I believe also in that. Fantastic. I like that. That's a really great way to describe it. So is this what you mean with intention when, when you're speaking of a point of intention with your creativity? Yeah, like, like uh, um, we, we are now bombarded by, again, like the, the superpower we have, I think it's intention in everything we do. Uh, there's a lot of uh, chatting now about AI, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and like, uh, we will be doomed by that uh, and and yes and no because in a way ai thankfully has no intention by now it's a valuable tool you can use but honestly when i listen to something or when i consume a uh, art or watch a movie uh, i can i'm always asking myself what the artist what the director is trying to say I like to uh, analyze things and not just consume, you know, without intention again. So for me, yes, you can give me a beautiful track composed by AI and I can say, okay, this has, yeah, you can sell it for a jingle, you can use it. But the moment I know that there's not an intention behind, there's not a message behind, I, I, automatically my interests go away. <laughs> And so I protect myself in this way. I know that in the end, a track made by a human being in the future and a track made by AI will probably sound the same as both the will might sound amazing. But I like to think that I will always be uh, able to choose the human side of it because I will be interested in the intention behind that. If you were uh, going to be dropped on an island and that island magically had speakers and uh, running electricity, which three instruments would you take with you? Yeah, okay. So I will have probably uh, my, uh, my favorite synth, which I see behind you, the Vermona Performer. It's uh, it, it an instrument that allowed me to express myself first time as a, like, became my second skin. I'm not using it so much lately. I was going to ask you about that. Please do uh, it. Sounds it's so great. Because, um, <laughs> it's because I went a little more into the modular stuff and I like now to have a little more control on like velocity gate and stuff, which Vermona is a little limited, but <laughs> still uh, it's, it's it's a canvas that you can use and, and, and it's gorgeous. It's Next to it, I can see the Octa track and that could be the other one because it covers all the ground. And then uh, as a third one, let me take a, a look around. Oof. I mean, I love effects, uh, but also no, I would take my Avalon there it is. That would cover my Avalon. That is the um, the, um, the 303 clone, right? The 303 clone. No, this, this guy here. So this is like the core then of of really like if you were had to strip it down to the most minimal, this would be it, right? It would be. It, it would cover what I'm more known for, like the kind of music I can do, and and of course the Octatrack is a, is is a sort of cheat because it does uh, it's a sampler, so so. Honestly, this setup here of those two devices next to each other is fully influenced by you, Federico. I saw you using this with the arpeggiator, with the scales, and I was like, this is amazing. And I basically use it mostly just like that. So it this is, is, it is, yeah. it is. And, and let me also say something like, uh, I tended to complicate my life lately uh, with a lot of stuff. And of course, with my job, I received tons of things. Mm. Uh, and, and, 
and everything that I receive is like I have to learn and blah 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 and, and it makes my life more complicated. Back in the day when I was just doing my live show, like live streaming with Candice doing visual and I was using uh, the Octatrack, the Vermona, the Model One Mixer and having fun, it was the best. And mm. sometimes I watch those things that were of course very uh, naive in a way because it's not a lot of production value behind. It's very simple stuff, always like mono, harmonically is one chord. But I have to say it was a very honest expression of myself. Uh, something that now I listen and I say, oh, I was able to do that. I miss the fact that I could play an hour and go with the flow. Now I'm way more uh, trying to make things more complicated and of course the track that are coming out are better but still the uh, honest approach the, 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 the value of just playing like you used to play a guitar and I wanted to do that with electronic music that was great and mm. you know I might go back to that it, it's always a, a, a cycle and um, and, and when you find the instrument you resonate with, you should hold on it. The, the easy thing is like, then you say, okay, I, I got bored about that. And then you drop it. But uh, I, I know for a long time, and I've, I've been identified with the Vermona, and uh, I should actually go back to that because that's another, like I was saying before, like if that comes super easy to you, means that maybe you established a bond with that instrument. And so don't underestimate it. it. Means that maybe you should even, when you feel bored, even go further so you can make uh, a unique bond and, and and get to the next level with it. So I think I may be speaking here for quite a few people. I'm I'm hoping uh, that you will do another one of your more classic jams, which is the Vermona Octatrack and Avalon. That would be really cool to see. Because it's it's beautiful what you've done with those instruments. Really, honestly, it's it's amazing. I have really an, an EP. Uh, I have an EP that it's ready to go, which was just made uh, with uh, uh, Vermona, Oxy, and FX, and uh, it's four track, which cool. sound as simple as Vermona can get, but then there was a lot of uh, mixing involved and uh, it's simple stuff, but very uh, dear to me. So I think I'm gonna release that in the upcoming weeks. Fantastic, uh, I'll link it in the description of this video for anyone that wants to dive in and listen. Thank you. Cool, okay, I have one more question that I would love to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that you can recommend for people trying to break through and making music or content creation their career? like? Um, so you have right now a huge, another huge power that you have everything you need for free uh, to break through. Uh, back in the day, and I'm talking the 90s, like something would come only if other people would push you, if uh, someone would use their platform to push you. Now you can build everything, so you need to just find what is your voice and what you want to say. Uh, for me, was at the beginning, uh, now I'll change a little, but at the beginning it was like, I want to use a synthesizer uh, as I would use a guitar. So I want to be able to play, not just play sequences, but actually play, create on the spot. Uh, that idea put me on the right track and I find, I. I I search for the uh, right instrument, which become, as we just said, the Octatrack and the Vermona. And out of that, I start building my, uh, I start building my voice, my my message, and uh, and it came organically. Uh, so. I would say invest some time in learning what platform could be good for you. Uh, if I would go back, I would put more, more, I put most of my eggs into Instagram, which is great because it gives me a lot of, you know, way to be in touch with other artists and brands. But also Instagram is the worst, you cannot monetize. So mm. I had a post of, going first time viral a few days ago and I was seeing 
how many people are looking at that we, we are talking hundreds of thousands and i made zero out of that zero so i was thinking look at that this is something that has commercial value but i'm making nothing out of that so i would more invest in stuff like youtube because it's a good platform uh, once you have the right amount if you want to do some more money patreon would be a it's always a good way to you know make money but yeah the first step is just like uh, find a way on how to make your voice uh, be heard and uh, and you have many possibility and then just focus on that uh, create create stuff whatever it is music content but you need to then uh, take it as a as a religious uh, sort of endeavor and every day you have to go uh, and, and do it just do the work and things will happen it cannot be casual I, it doesn't happen anymore unless you are on TikTok and doing silly things but that is not uh, nothing that you will then use in 5 to 10 years Mm, that's very true. I, I really agree with what you've what you've explained. And actually, we we work together with uh, quite a few musicians who also do uh, master classes to teach other mm. people. It's just going through my mind. Potentially, this is something we could also work on together. Maybe it would be interesting for you also to look at that. And what we see is is people are really really happy when they can really learn in detail from someone with a lot of experience. So, if mm. we do this, if we leave this uh, in this video and don't edit it out, then you will find a link uh, also at some point below this video. Um, so Federico, thank you so much for, for sharing your, your wisdom, your insights, your experience on this journey, uh, always coming from such a good place, uh, really coming through the screen. It's been a total pleasure to speak with you today and, and thank you for sharing your thoughts and your time. My pleasure.